hey, I'm just an idiot who loves to read. If you are an idiot who likes to read, consider subscribing. We're just friends. We're both readers. Uh, so I want to I want to ask you a question. Have you ever wondered? Uh, Terry Goodkind, first of all, may he rest in peace. Uh, Terry Goodkind, why is Terry Goodkind hated? Why that? Why do fantasy fans absolutely? Oi. <laughs> Guess who it is? <laughs> it's the Mad Queen. She is literally always there, always bothering me. Like uh, last time I was filming this video and she literally turned off the lights. Another day she blacked down. She literally tore down the green screen behind me every time she's tearing down something. Today she's hunting my mic because the cables for the mic are dragging on the ground and she, she doesn't like that. She thinks it's something. I'm gonna eat you, Mike. Come here. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> to the Mad Queen, I suppose. The Mad Queen and the Terry Good kind are both the same. They're both really, really bothersome. So we'll be talking about why do people hate Terry Good kind, uh, and I'll show you how his, you know, his misconduct. I'll show you an interview with him being cocky, and this is the interview that spilled his death. Okay, it is the interview. But number two, I'll show you how he mistreated, uh, you know, one of his co-workers who was an artist who worked for him. And I'll show you basically the entire catalog, okay? I'll, 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 I will give, you know, concrete details of everything. So, uh, hop aboard, me and the Mad Queen, we will help you out. Let's go. Problem number one, snobbery and how, uh, basically he considered himself above the fantasy genre, okay? Have you considered writing anything outside of, uh, of the world in the Sword of Truth series? Terry Goodkind says, hmm, here goes, all right? This is how someone goes down the mud. Yes, my interest is in telling stories about heroic figures. In many ways, the fantasy genre is a hindrance to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will, we will debunk each one of this complete bullshit, okay? And so I do consider other ways to tell stories that revolve around important human beings. For me, the biggest interest is uh, the fun of writing interesting tales, and there are a lot of different ways to do that. I have thought uh, about writing other stories that are in the same world in a different time. And ultimately, what I would like to do is write contemporary fiction mm -hmm, that general fiction readers are most drawn too my my dude you write epic fantasy that's by far my largest audience is general fiction and not genre readers this is complete lie okay let's let's really debunk this okay let's completely debunk why this is uh, uh, just insane because he says uh, my interest is in uh, telling stories about heroic figures what genre does heroic figures better than the fantasy genre, specifically epic fantasy? No other genre in general fiction exists that does heroic figures better than the fantasy genre. So what do you mean if this is your objective, this is your goal, he established it. If this is your goal, how is it a hindrance? It's literally the best tool in the world for writing epic heroic figures. How is it a hindrance? That's a complete lie. Number two, uh, he says, uh, for me, the biggest interest is the fun of writing interesting tales. But I read Wizard's First Rule. That's the most generic shit I have read in two decades, man. That's the most generic crap I have ever read in my life. What are you even talking about? That shit, you are writing generic crap. With Richard Cypher, Dark and Raul, you have a chosen one and a dark lord, and you, you literally rehash fantasy 101, specifically epic fantasy 101. So what the fuck are you talking about? Another thing is a complete lie, which is toward the end. He says, uh, you know, um, that's by far my largest audience. It's general fiction and not genre readers. Uh, no, your, your fans are genre readers. Number two, your fans are specifically fantasy fans, okay? They are fans of the fantasy genre. Let's explain why it's a big deal. Because you have to understand there is a war. For so long, this war has been waged by fantasy fans and fantasy authors versus uh, you know, conventional, traditional media that refuses to recognize fantasy as a legit form of storytelling. Because let's say in colleges, right? In colleges, perfect uh, fantasy stories that have been written uh, with such care and with such skill and with such precision 
uh, you know, that are critically acclaimed would be denied uh, by professors. This happened to me. I can attest to this, okay? Uh, and it will happen to you if you go to university and you try to get, you know, your professor to, uh, you know, uh, give, let you uh, analyze your favorite fantasy book. This will not happen. They will stop you. Okay, uh, a lot of the time they will stop you. You might find an angel, congratulations if you do. But generally speaking, if the further you go back in time, the worse the fantasy genre had it. There were less sales. The fantasy genre was not as mainstream as it is today. Number three, the fantasy genre was not considered serious literature. It was considered literature for children. This means fantasy fans and fantasy authors together had to wage a war. Okay, uh, because we, you know, Brandon Sanderson puts it beautifully. When I was doing a book signing and a mom came up to me after I signed some books for her young daughter and the mom said, not to be offensive, but why? Why do you guys like this stuff? I can't figure it out. It's not realistic. Why fantasy? It's not insulting to ask me why I like it. Uh, this mother really genuinely wanted to learn. You see, I feel like fantasy is a genre can do anything. This is great. This means that you can find in fantasy literary styling as great as the great literary classics. You can find a romance as powerful and passionate as anything in the romance genre. You can find a mystery as intriguing as any mystery and it's all fantasy. Fantasy fans and fantasy authors have always united. This is why people love someone like Terry Pratchett, okay? This is why Neil Gaiman, this is why George R. R. Martin, all these authors talk about, you know, that they are fantasy fans, that they have been reading fantasy for so long, okay? Uh, and they think that the fantasy genre is a beautiful uh, tool for storytelling. This is cruel. Uh, sorry, this is crucial, okay? The reason why it's crucial is because we want recognition and we want to be respected as much as literary because the fantasy genre is a beautiful tool for storytelling. It just is what you want it to be, okay? You shape it. It's like water, okay? Uh, you put it in the glass that you want uh, and you shape it to whatever you want, okay? Uh, it's a tool, basically. It means that, let's say, if a fantasy book becomes famous, that author acknowledges that they are a fantasy author. So this gives credence, this gives more bargaining power for other fantasy writers. Number two, it means that there will be more fantasy stories. Number three, if that particular famous story is really famous and it is critically acclaimed, hey, guess what? We now have a fantasy story that is critically acclaimed, like A Song of Ice and Fire. This is why we love George R. R. Martin. Okay, so there you go. That, that's why Terry Goodkind is hated uh, for the first reason, right? Because uh, he writes in the fantasy genre. His fans are, you know, uh, fantasy fans. Number three, he writes shit fantasy, first of all. Uh, number four, number four, he is the crucial bit. He considers himself above other fantasy authors who are better than him. Number three, uh, so sorry, number five, he does not help in this particular war. He is basically a literary snob. Uh, I'll read you um, another particular comment by him. So he was asked another question, what do you think uh, distinguishes your books from all the other fantasy books out there and why should readers choose to read your, your series? So he responds by saying, there are several things. <coughs> okay, there are several things. Oh my God. Okay, first of all, I don't write fantasy. I write stories that have important human themes. They have elements of romance, history, adventure, mystery, and philosophy. Most fantasy is one-dimensional, and my book, Wizard's First Rule, is the most detailed, tenth-dimensional book you will find in the entirety of literature. Anyhow, it's either about magic or a world-building. Okay, what is the Wizard's First Rule? It's about magic, and it's about world-building. It's about the Sword of Truth, and it's about Richard Cypher. And it's about a chosen one stopping a Dark Lord. It's as stock as any fantasy gets. And along the journey, they face a plentitude of, uh, you know, uh, fantastical creatures. So you literally just ripped the freaking fellowship. A lot of people do that. I just feel the need to point out that you did, because you are saying you are not fantasy. The others who have ripped the fellowship, everyone have ripped the fellowship first of all, but the others who have, don't talk shit about fantasy, okay? I don't do either. Oh my god, this is BS. Uh, there are so many people who responded to this. Um, 
I'll actually read you some of those uh, responses. Uh, a particular person writes, wow, I really found this quote by Terry Goodkind of Butin. Uh, this is in our fantasy, I believe. I was reading through one of the threads and someone posted this quote quote uh, by Terry Goodkind. First of all, I don't write fantasy, I write blah blah blah, the thing that I just read for you. Uh, you know, uh, Michael continues, Michael J. Sullivan, he continues, it really left a bad taste in my mouth. I agree that good storytelling, regardless of genre, uh, you know, have uh, common aspects, romance, history, adventure, blah blah blah, but I feel he would have been much better off uh, stopping there, taking a cheap stab at what is clearly his genre seems like crap in where you sleep. Damn, I love that. It, it definitely is crap in where you sleep because you write fantasy, you take the money of fantasy fans, and then you look back and you shit in their face. And you tell them, I don't just write fantasy. Actually, no, no, no. You say, I don't write fantasy. Yeah, okay, wow. Uh, does anyone else feel this way? Absolutely, I feel that way too. Okay, uh, there were other people who actually had a severe reaction to this. But that's not really where it stops. There are toxic conduct, you know, with him, with his co-workers. Uh, let me show you some of those. So Terry Goodkind had this book called uh, Shroud of Eternity, okay? It was getting published and it was in the, you know, proce process of being polished. And they were also making a cover for the book. So the artist that was supposed to make the cover, what ended up happening is that, you know, Terry basically saw the cover and he started behaving like a complete child. Uh, he started behaving like a complete child because what he did directly was attack the artist. He literally just sent his fans to the to the to the uh, uh, you know to to criticize and to critique harshly the art. And he offered his uh, fans uh, you know uh, reading. Okay, the the book that was coming out it was really hyped, and he basically said, okay, you'll get to read this book earlier if you go and you criticize this particular artist. I'll actually read you a Guardian article that puts and sums all of this beautifully because that's where I studied this from and so it's better to just show the, uh, the original source so I'll just show you that. So it goes, fantasy author Terry Goodkind has apologized after calling the cover of his latest book laughably bad and offering free books to readers in return for their verdicts, which prompted a backlash from illustrators and authors. <laughs> in a post on his Facebook page, the best-selling author, uh, so, uh, so, uh, Sword of Truth, the, the author of the Sword of Truth called his book Shroud of uh, Eternity a great book with a very bad cover, laughably bad cover. Uh, offering 10 randomly selected readers a chance to win a hardback uh, copy in return for their thoughts on the cover. Goodkind published uh, a poll that included the voting options laughably bad or excellent. While almost uh, 12,000 readers took part in the vote, some pledged to never buy another book by Terry Goodkind again. This guy is really just super childish. So the artist responded, uh, the cover illustrator, uh, Bastion, uh, he wrote, you know, it was nice working with you, Terry. Uh, what you're doing is totally disrespectful. Uh, as if I didn't carry those covers accord, uh, you know, according to exactly what I was told to do. In my entire career, I have never been an author, uh, sorry, I've never seen an author behaving like that. I told you, like, he, he's a complete, complete, complete just, you know, buffoon when it comes to this particular point, because why would you even do that? It, the article continues, authors and illustrators come out, uh, came out in support of, you know, uh, Bastion, including science fiction author, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, an artist, mm -hmm, who tweeted, artists directly follow a brief they are given by your publisher. Publicly dragging the work they do for you is a dick move, not to mention incredibly unprofessional. Uh, this is a tweet uh, by Rovina. She, she says, it, by the way, this is also in the article, you can find it. Sometimes it seems like authors look upon illustrators with a sense of suspicion and distrust. I don't know if they realize that illustrators are prof professionals who have honed their craft for years and our goal and expertise is, is specifically to help them sell books. <laughs> Uh, on Saturday, uh, you know, Terry Goodkind shared an apology on Facebook writing, The contest on poll below is poking fun at my own work. The artist is obviously an exceptionally talented creative. Uh -huh. The problem is with the publisher. I created the poll as a way to poke fun at the cover art because it is a 
poor representation of characters within the book. Characters I'm deeply passionate about. It's impossible not to be emotional uh, about such things when I have spent the last 30 years of my life devoted uh, to the very nuance. I do not recommend that you go down this rabbit hole because there are a lot of other things from 1990s, from 2000s. Uh, this video is getting very long and I've been standing here for what? 39 minutes. Uh, so I hope I can reduce the size of this video to like 25 minutes. Anyhow, I hope that you enjoyed this particular dive into why Terry Goodkind is hated. Now, it is important to clarify, I do believe that people can change and I do wholeheartedly, uh, you know, forgive Terry Goodkind for the cover. Okay, it's just that he never really apologized because you see for the cover, he did apologize. If you apologize, likely I will forgive you. Uh, and for the other stuff, for his comments, for his snobbery, for his, you know, him distances up himself in the house he was raised, in the fantasy genre, that kind of deeply hurts a lot of people and it hurts me as well. And it hurts technically all hardcore fantasy fans. So, uh, that, you know, he cannot apologize now. So, bad luck. Anyhow, uh, may he rest in peace. May he rest in his grave. Uh, this is why. This is this video has been why is Terry Goodkind hated? I will likely title it something else. You know, the most toxic, you know, fantasy author. Blah blah blah. Uh, technically, this entire video is predicated on why was Terry Goodkind hated, and that's what we have done. We have showcased why he was really considered bad because you see, he saw himself as very good author but he was very bad. Number two, he saw himself as someone who didn't write fantasy, but he wrote fantasy and he wrote shit fantasy. Uh, and number three, he really had a terrible, you know, conduct with his co-workers, okay? He was quite an aggressive guy with his uh, politics as well. I don't want to delve into that. You can see in the comments that uh, we have mentioned, the people responding to him, his politics are literally in every bit of his story, which a lot of people didn't like because you know, a lot of his politics is just kind of garbage. Anyhow, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Have a nice day. Bye.